during... When you want to swim, you want See, to... See, I'm gonna get stuck now with that song. Now it's in my head. Sorry. Dory, do you see anything? Ah! Something's got me! That was me. I'm sorry. <gasps> Who's that? Who's that? Who could it be? It's me. Are... Are you my conscience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm your conscience. We haven't spoken for a while. How are you? Mm, can't complain. Yeah, good. Now, Dory, I want you to tell me. Do you see anything? I see a... I see a light. A light? Yeah, over there. Hey, conscience, am I dead? No, I, I, I see it too. What is it? It's so pretty. I... I'm feeling happy. Which is a big deal for me. I want to touch it. Oh. Hey, come back. <laughs> come on back here. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get I'm you. I'm gonna swim with you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna be your best friend. Good feelings gone. Everyone has seen that movie, but have you ever wondered what that animal really is? Well, it's the anglerfish, and I'm going to teach you about them today. So, for starters, there's about 200 different species, but the one in particular we're going to learn about is the sea devil anglerfish. They are in the kingdom Animalia, which are multicellular eukaryotic organisms. They are in phylum chordata because they have a hollow nerve cord. They are in class Actino. Pterygy because they are bony fish. They are in order Lophomorphes because they have a fleshy lure that's used for hunting. They are in the family Melanosid today for being anglerfish, and they are in the genus Melanesitus for being sea devils, but their species in particular is the S. tulus. In Finding Nemo, however, they are depicted as these very large creatures, which in fact is not true at all. They are quite small. Females are much larger than the males, but the females only grow up to 5 inches when the males only grow up to about 1 inch. Females also have very sharp teeth, but their most noticeable feature is, well, their light. Their light is produced through bioluminescence, and the light actually comes from their dorsal spine, but has moved forward through evolution. At the end of their lure, or esca, is photobacteria. This has a symbiotic relationship with the anglerfish. The bacteria lives off the anglerfish and eats what it also eats, while creating light for the fish. Bioluminescence is also used by fireflies. Some scientists believe that these fish have what is called ampullae of Lorenzini. These are sensory organs that allow the fish to feel vibrations in the water around them. This is seen in other sharks, such as bull sharks and leopard sharks. Sea devils are on top of their respective food chain, and in order to hunt or eat their prey, they use their esket as a guide. They are able to eat a variety of different things, such as small fish, crustaceans, and even shrimp. They can also eat prey that is twice their size. Their stomachs have adapted to stretch so far because there is such limited prey down at the bottom of the ocean where they live. Living so far down in the ocean, it is very important for the anglerfish to conserve their energy. So in order to do this, they basically just float through the water. This is a video of the first anglerfish ever recorded that we know of. It was seen off the coast of California. That are very rarely observed in their natural habitat. Fewer than half a dozen have ever been captured on film or video by deep diving research vehicles. 
This little angler, about nine centimeters long, is named Melanocetus. It is also known as the Black Sea Devil, and it lives in the deep, dark waters of the Monterey Canyon. We believe that this is the first video footage ever made of this species, alive and at depth. Anglers have a remarkable apparatus on their heads, a fishing pole with a luminous lure at the tip, which they use to attract their prey. In the darkness of deep water, they flash the light to attract prey and draw them near the angler's mouth. When a fish or squid swims up, it is quickly inhaled by the angler's huge mouth and trapped by its long, sharp teeth. Given the shape of this angler's body, it's pretty clearly not designed for speed. Instead, these are ambush predators lurking in the darkness to grab an unwary meal. Another thing we can tell from the shape of the body is that this is a female. In this species, the males are much smaller and they lack the fishing pole and lure. Males are ill-equipped for feeding and their sole responsibility appears to be to find a female and mate with her as soon as possible. When we came upon this specimen at a depth of about 600 meters, we noted that she has a broken tooth. You can see it on the left side of her lower jaw. We have no idea whether it will be replaced by another after it falls off. So far as we know, there is no tooth fairy in the deep ocean. You can see that the eyes of this angler are quite small. In their dark habitat, anglerfish rely more on feeling the movements of other animals in the water around them than on vision. The tiny pale dots you see along the sides of the fish and on its head are organs very sensitive to the slightest movements, and they function very effectively in the dark. The deep sea is filled with surprises and wonderful creatures. Humans have only just begun to explore this vast realm, and we can only imagine what discoveries are yet to be made. Now how they reproduce is very interesting. Because of the great size difference, they reproduce through means of parasitism. This means that the male will find a female as soon as possible and will bite into her. An enzyme is then released, which makes the male body basically dissolve into nothing but the gonads. All nutrients come from the female's body, and she, she can then reproduce whenever she is ready. She can also have as many as six males attached to her body at once. However, what happens after that is a little fuzzy. It is believed that the female hatches 30 to 100 eggs in a sac-like covering. It is buoyant and can float to the surface where the eggs then hatch and the cover dissolves. The eggs are born at the surface where they spend their time feeding on plankton and small animals. They then make their way down to the darkness where they will spend their life. Their parents have no part of raising the fish, and for the male, it is absolutely vital for them to find a female as soon as possible in order to survive. There are also other anglerfish that are very interesting, such as the frogfish. They live at the bottom of the ocean and walk on their hands, so to speak, which is technically their pectoral fins, but they don't move extremely fast, but yet this is how they get around. So the monkfish. It is a very flat fish that usually lives at the bottom of the ocean and does not usually swim very fast. In some parts of the world, this fish is even considered a delicacy. They are also able to swallow things that are indigestible. These three fish all have very unique qualities, but are all considered anglerfish. The sea devil itself has not been studied very extensively because it lives in the dark, but who knows what else might live in the darkness below.